We've seen join, we've seen group, we've seen into. Let me show you the granddaddy of all combinations of join, group, and into. In a previous video, I showed you, or I told you that I would show you the last place you could use an into. Here we go. I want to write a query that will tell me who my best customers are. And by best customers, I mean the customers that make the most orders. And the way I have to do that is using the join we've seen in previous videos. So var results gets from c and db dot customers join o and db dot orders on c dot customer id equals o dot customer id so let me just kind of draw what's going on here let's let's say here's billy bob all right he's not really a customer in northwind but let's say he's a customer in northwind and let's say these are his orders these lines i'm drawing are his orders and then Oh, look, here's, I think, weren't we dealing with Maria earlier? So this will be Maria. Give her, I don't know, give her a little dress or something. And here are her orders, so on and so forth. And so now we've we've joined each of these customers to their orders. So there's kind of this link now to Maria and all of her orders. If you get the idea, I won't draw all the lines. And then we got Billy Bob, and he's kind of linked to all of his orders. But the orders are still scattered about out here. What I want is a nice grouping. Okay, here's Billy Bob. I want a nice grouping of Billy Bob with all of his orders. And then Maria, she'll be over here. Maria, sorry I couldn't resist. Here's Maria and let's have all of her orders with her as well. Well, do you feel a group by coming on? Let, let's, let's do a group by. Let's keep going with this group. What are we going to group? We're going to group the order by, we need to group by something that's unique. What's unique to each customer? Well, the customer ID. Now, having typed that, though, there's something that uh, eats me up with this. I could actually group the orders by their customer ID without having to join the customers. All right, remember that the orders table, it has a customer ID, and so does the customers table, it has customer ID, and that is our link between the two, but if O already has customer ID, then why do I need to bring C in here to do the customer ID? Well, I'll tell you why. Lots of people like to be known by their name and not by their ID, and working with IDs can be really complicated. The Northwind database is hideous because it's so old, and the customer IDs are like these strings that they just made up. Generally, IDs will be integers starting at some value and then just increasing from there on out, and so you don't want to really memorize your customer. If you're running a business and your customers, you call them by, hey, I remember you, your customer 5842. Well, that doesn't make them feel important, and they probably won't get them to come back. So let's, I want their name. All right, let's, let's group by their name. Well, oh, there's a problem using their contact name. What if I have two customers with the same contact name? Uh, then all of a sudden those orders are going to be jumbled together, and oh, that's not ideal. So since we're doing link to objects, and what I mean by link to objects is we're using the iNumerable interface. We're not using the iQueryable interface that we would generally actually use with the entity framework. And that gets back to expression trees. You can go watch my videos on expression trees. Pretty interesting stuff. We're doing link to objects. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to say, hey, group O by C. All right, let me show you what happens here. We get Billy Bob, and he's an object in RAM. Okay, he's instantiated an object in RAM, and he has an address. Let's just say his address is 349A. I'll throw the A in there just to make it look hexadecimal. But there's just an address in RAM, and I know that he's linked to his orders now, and I want to group those orders together by him, by his address. Okay, the default implementation for equals and get hash code, which group by relies on the default implementation for equals. Well, the equals just says, hey, um, our, our, our address is equal. Well, Bob's address is going to be equal to himself always and forever. Let's go back to these entities here. Do you remember these things? I made this customer class with a customer ID, contact name, company name, country. But nowhere in here did I override the equals method, nor did I override get hash code. So the default implementation defined in our base class object Okay, remember, if you don't define a base class, you inherit it implicitly from object. The default implementation of equals from object is to just compare these addresses. So I can actually cheat and do this. I'm going to group O by C. And remember, group is like a select. All queries terminate with a 
group or a select, and I want to keep going here. I need to count how many are orders are in this group. I think we're done with the address idea. I hope that made sense there. So to continue it on, as we've seen before, I have to roll forward with into G, and G is short for group, and then I want to see my best customers first. All right, if I just say, hey, select whatever out here, then I'm going to get whatever order that that group by returns these things. But I don't want that. I want to know which ones, which customers have made the most orders. So let's throw an order by in here. Order by G dot count. Okay, recall that G is an I grouping. A little bit of a refresher here. I grouping of what we're grouping. It's going to be orders. So an I grouping of order. And go watch the videos in the previous playlist to hammer this down. But remember, if I click on this and hit F12, of course, you can't navigate to I grouping. Let me move it out here. I'm going to grab this text and just move it out here. And maybe it will be a little more friendly. F12. There we go. An I grouping is simply an I enumerable with a key. Okay, it's just a sequence that has a key. And in our case, our key will be the customer. Okay, Billy Bob is the customer. He's the key. He's the one that we're getting the orders for. Here are all of his orders again. And the I enumerable part, the sequence part, will be all of his orders. So he is the key, and the I enumerable part are all of his orders. So going back to this, I can say, hey, order by the count descending, meaning I want the largest numbers first. Select, I think we're done with this. Let me get rid of that. Select, let's do a projection of more than one data value. So the way we do that is, again, going back to these anonymous types, new g.key. Okay, I want Billy Bob. And I also want the number of orders that Billy Bob has made, and that will be g.count. All right, but as I type that, I realize, you know, I did a count here, and I did a count here, and order by could possibly call the lambda generated from this several times. Not guaranteed, but it could, possibly could. And so all of a sudden, we're running count several times, at least twice, and potentially more when order by gets to it. So let's jump in here and run it once with a let. Let num orders gets g.count, and then I'll just say num orders. And down here, I'll say no more. Well, I guess I already said no orders. I can just cheat and just take this off. And C Sharp will automatically say, oh, you want a automatic property here called num orders on this anonymous type. So I'll just generate the name num orders. And it will also have a key. In fact, I'm going to rename this customer. I guess in the end, I was really interested in their contact name. So let's say contact name gets g.key. Again, key is the customer object so key dot contact name and it's late at night I just realized I don't need to say contact name out there because C sharp will just say oh we're taking the contact name property so I will name the property for this anonymous type to be contact name Whew. a lot of details I don't know how I keep all this in my head let's iterate and see who our best customers are for each var pair reason why I'm saying pair it's this Anonymous type, which is kind of like a pair. It's the contact name with number of orders. Var pair and an in results. Uh, console write line pair dot contact name plus a little bit of formatting here. Pair dot num orders. Control F5. Let's see who our best customers are. And list a little long, but here up at the top, Jose31, Roland, not too far behind. Horst, Maria, Patricia. So these are our best customers. So look at that. We've we have a a join, we have a group, and we have an into. Oh look at that. And I also threw a let and an order by. But the the main ones I want to focus on are the join, the group, and the into. Because in the next video, I'm going to actually get rid of the group and yet still get the same results by grouping and also doing an into. So, woohoo, next video.